wholesale war looms in the near and middle east the second battalion of the eighth marines reinforced and with complete battle kit embarks for the mediterranean on six ships of the atlantic fleet from moorhead city north carolina and norfolk virginia the leathernecks will augment the manpower of the sixth fleet now stationed in the mediterranean ready for any emergency Even as the Marines leave, new violence erupts in Cyprus, North Africa, and Palestine. And Americans hear President Eisenhower warn that a general war in that area would be a world catastrophe. And as usual, the Marines head for the trouble spot. And Americans hope that they don't have to land. Unexplained explosion touches off a savage blaze in a Royal Canadian Air Force hangar at Montreal's airport. Firemen are unable to save two adjoining Air Force office buildings, but kept the flames from spreading to other hangars. No lives were lost, but the damage to property and equipment was costly, as the flames, fed by oil and aviation fuel, ravaged the wood and metal structure. Forty cars parked nearby were damaged or destroyed by the scorching heat. Hopelessly damaged before rescue could be attempted were two big multi-engine transport planes which exploded and added to the destruction. Units of three fire departments battled for hours to control the blaze, whose damage was finally assessed at three million dollars. In an ancient ritual, United Press correspondent Robert Basler is inducted into Buddhism at the famous temple at Phnom Penh. Mr. Basler had come to cover the coronation of the King of Cambodia. With shaven head and the saffron robes, he kneels before the superior of the monastery. A simple ceremony in the presence of all the members of the Pagoda Monastery is completed as he kneels facing the superior. He may remain in the order for a day, a year, or his whole life. Actually, he intends to remain a month in an atmosphere of complete austerity and seclusion. At the Pantages Theatre in Hollywood, a celebrity-studded crowd gathers for the 28th Academy Awards ceremonies. Past Oscar winners, such as Frank Sinatra, and promising young starlets and industry leaders. And contenders for awards, among them James Cagney, gather for Hollywood's own recognition of its finest achievements of the year. Ernest Borgnine is named Best Actor of the Year, receiving his Oscar from Grace Kelly in what may be her last Hollywood appearance. A moment of double significance for the audience. Jerry Lewis presents the Oscar for Best Actress, awarded to Anna Magnani. It's accepted by Marissa Pavan for the Italian star who was unable to be present. If there's a sugar daddy in the house, here's a fashion story with real appeal. Something real sweet in the Easter bonnet line for sweetheart. And believe me, this isn't just a lot of sticky sentiment on my part. These pretty models at Macy's in San Francisco are wearing hats that look good enough to eat. So if she puts it on rather gingerly, you'll understand. Well, even if you don't understand, don't eat your heart out. The chef will cook up something while you get the picture of a picture hat so full of that downright goodness that, my goodness, it is good enough to eat. Icing on the cake is bonbon on the bonnet. They're made of powdered sugar and egg white. Just a little something the cook whipped up. Passing the hat takes on new meaning with this bevy of beauties. And think of the possibilities. When Mama's new chapeau is outmoded, she doesn't have to throw it away. She can eat it. Hmm, that's food for thought. And who buys the hats? Who buys them? Sugar Daddy, of course. In New York, it's the 29th Intercity Golden Gloves Championships and New Yorkers underdogs against the Chicago Sluggers. In the 126-pound sub-novice bouts, Harlem schoolboy Vince Shomo moves in on Chicago and Bill Duclos. stirring slugfests in the series. Shomo strikes like lightning to finish it off. In 
In the eighth bout, New York leads in team points. This is the heavyweight championship. Rugged Johnny Harper, dark trunks facing southpaw Booker Staten of Chicago. Harper lost the first round, and he opens cautiously in the second, but not for long. It's a ripping savage attack that has Staten reeling back on the defensive. Most glad to hear the bell. Harper wins the crown and New York wins the title. Two sheepdogs steal the show in Limerick during the Irish Kennel Club's annual affair. Not sheep, but ducks are the chargers that Scott and Nell, with patient cunning, herd into a pen in the center of the arena. When one tries to duck out, the four-legged shepherd is right on the job, riding herd on a duck. I don't believe it either, but there it is. They do it well, our Scott and Nell. <laughs>